Hello. So I apologize if you can hear my dishwasher in the background. I can hear it. I'm not sure if you can. Um, last night, I decided not to record this early because I had the dryer running and my dryer is pretty close to my desk and it was loud. So of course, this morning I woke up, I said to myself, ah, now I have peace and quiet. I can record that, that solve video of the gas from yesterday. And I immediately went and turned on the dishwasher, which is exactly as loud and exactly as close to my desk. Um, sometimes I feel like I am one body inhabited by both a normal adult human being and also a horrible little trash goblin that um, <laughs> does everything it can to sabotage my acting like a sensible adult. But if you can't hear the dishwasher, this all sounded completely crazy anyways. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's take a look at this puzzle. So this is negative 40 degrees by Philip Newman, and it is the gas that was originally posted on February 4th, 2024. By the way, I'm a little traumatized by the fact that I have to try to correctly pronounce the word February, Feb, February. <laughs> um, <laughs> in all of my solve videos this month. This is a new thing for me this year. Um, and just just a new way to feel slightly embarrassed on camera. If anybody else struggles with that, let me know in the comments. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each marked three by three region. We also have thermometers. So along each thermometer, digits strictly increase starting from the round bulb end and going all the way to the tip. And we also have clones marked in the grid. So there are these clone regions. Well, I shouldn't say regions because I'm going to be very specific that these are not regions. So basically the two squares marked A contain the exact same set of digits in the exact same configuration. So like if this is a seven, then this is also a seven. Same for the squares marked B, same digits, same configuration. The thing to be extremely careful about here is that these are not extra regions, even though they look like killer cages. And if you've solved a few of these, you may very well be used to solving things that look like this with the assumption that they can't have repeated digits, because that's kind of a typical restriction on killer cage Sudoku. Here, there is no such restriction. And Philip has actually kindly been very, very clear about this in the rules. He says digits may repeat within a cage if allowed by other rules. So we don't get to make eliminations based on what's in this cage. So the most restricted starting place is going to be these long thermometers. These positions and these positions are going to contain identical digits because of how they are situated within the clones. The absolute smallest this could possibly be would be four because it's the fourth position along this thermo. But the absolute largest this could possibly be is also four because that would create a thermo layout of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can't go bigger because we can't have the end of the thermo be bigger than nine. So that forces these to both be four, five, six. And in turn, that forces the beginning of this thermo to be minimal and the end of this thermo to be maximal. And Philip has done something very elegant here, I think, where now the digits we've just gotten give us a very clear next place to go. We can now fill in an additional digit in this B clone because these have to match and in this B clone because these have to match. Now, the next most restricted thing that stands out to me is this thermometer. It's only five cells, which is one cell shorter than the shortest thermometer I would typically do like full pencil marks on. But just for the sake of like a clear illustration, I'm going to go ahead and pencil mark this and kind of do just like a gradual reduction of which digits can go in each cell along the thermometer. So this could be one through five, two through six, three through seven, four through eight, and five through nine. And we can make some reductions. So this can't be five or eight. We can't eliminate a six there just because there is a six in this cage because digits can repeat in cages. This is neither four nor eight because we have those both in the column and it's not seven because of the row. So we can eliminate seven here, six here, and five here. We can also eliminate both two and four from here and two from here because of digits in the rows and columns. Because this is now a minimum of three, this is now either four, five, or six. And that's all we can reduce them now, but now we can use the clones to go a little bit further. So these two cells have to have the exact same digits as these two cells. So if I copy my pencil marks over, this is either one, three, or four. And more importantly, this is three or five, right? So this can't be a five now because there's a five in the region in this case. So that is going to be a three, and that's also a three, and that makes the beginning of the thermo a one. 
And let's grab the symmetrical deduction here, because I can see already there's going to be one. This is 5 or 7. This is 6, 7, or 9. There's a 5 in the region now, so that's going to be a 7. And that's going to make the end of the thermo a 9 when it kind of bounces back. Now, the million dollar question is, can we get our final two digits in these thermometers or in these clone regions? Let's find out. So we have to be very, very careful not to assume that this is going to be an extra region. In fact, we can see now that it can't be an extra region because it can't contain the digit eight at all. So what can it contain? Well, let's look at these shorter thermometers because this is going to match this digit and this is going to match this digit. So the absolute minimum that this could, po or the maximum this could possibly be would be seven, because then we would go seven, eight, nine. So this could be anything from one to seven right now, but what can we rule out? It sees a one, it sees a three, it sees a four, and it sees a five. So that leaves us with two, six, and seven. So now that's either two, six, or seven, because those digits match. And interestingly, there's a two in the column this time around, so that's not a two. And that means that this has to be a very high digit. So this is either six or seven. That means this is either seven or eight, and that's either seven or nine. But because we already have a seven in this column, that's going to be an eight, and that's going to be a nine. Can we do the same thing here? This cell has to contain a minimum of three. And this is going to be the exact same logic, just almost inverted. Um, so it's a minimum of three. So it's anything from three through nine. It can't be a nine. So it's three through eight. We can eliminate five, six, and seven because these cells all see it. So it is either three, four, or eight, but we have to duplicate it here. And when we put it here, there's an eight in the column. So it's also not eight. So if this is one or two, this is two or three, and this is three or four, but because we have a three here, we're gonna place a two there and we're going to place a one there. Now, can we do anything with these? Okay, so that has to be three or four. And we can't totally resolve those yet, but we'll get there shortly. So now I notice I have a one and nine here, and I have a one up here, and I have a nine down here, so I can place one and nine in the central region. So that leaves me with four, five, and six in these middle cells. And the remaining digits I still have to place out here are going to be three and seven. How about we take a look at these clone cells and see if we can find a restriction on those digits. So this, just based on this row here, can only be two, five, six, or seven. It can't be two or five because we have those both in the columns. So that is either six or seven. And whatever that is will be copied here. But when we copy it here, there's a six in the column. So that's now a seven. And we're gonna place a seven there. Okay, same thing going on here. I hope so. So according to this row, this is either three, four, five, or eight. It's not a five or an eight thanks to the column. And when we copy it here, we can see it also can't be a four. So those have to both be threes. So that's going to do a few things for us. The three that we just placed will resolve that and that and that. And so we can totally finish all of our clones. We only have these two tiny thermos left. And we're almost done with the three middle rows. So let's see if we can finish those. We need to place a two and a five in this row. So they'll go that way around thanks to the two there. This is going to be an eight and that's going to be a five. We can make one elimination here due to that six, and we can make one elimination here due to the four. So what do we do next? I'm looking at the grid and I see two columns that look very restricted to me. And I also see two rows that look very restricted to me. So I only have three empty cells in each of those rows and columns. I'm going to do a little pencil marking before I even play with these thermos. So what I still need in this row is four, six, and eight. And that doesn't immediately present a next move to me, but maybe there will be like some sy synergy between that and this. So I need one, three, and eight here. So I already have a one and three in this region. So my eight will go there. And then this is going to be my one, three pair. Well, that was helpful. Okay, that was something. I need two, seven, and nine in this column. So the two will go there. And then this will be a seven, nine pair. And I need two, four, and six in this row. So that's two or four, that's two or six, and that's four or six. Interesting. So what do we do next? Let's look at these columns, which are also pretty restricted. We need one, two, five, and six in this column. And we already have a one and a six here. So this will have to be the remaining two digits from that list of four, two, and five. 
that's resolved by that 2. And also that turns around and resolves this 6 and makes this a 1 to finish the column. Can we do the same thing here? So in this column, we need a 4, 5, 8, and 9. This can't be 4 or 9. So this has to be 5 and 8 in this order. That makes this a 4 and makes this a 9. So now we're left with two regions that only have two cells to fill in each. That will be a 4 and an 8. And this will be a 2 and a 6. Fantastic. So now we're almost done with these regions, right? So we really only need a 1, 3, 6, and 8. Oh, that's not quite as close to done as I was thinking we were. That's 1, 3, or 6 because it can't be 8. This also can't be an 8 because there's an 8 in the row. So actually we have an 8 here because of the thermo and because of these two 8s. Do we do something symmetrical here? So this is going to be 2, 4, 7, and 9. And this cannot be... A 2, that can't be a 2 because of the thermo, and this can't be a 2, so there's my 2, and the 8's also going to give me this. Oh, that's really useful. Fantastic. So now we need a 7, 8, and 9 in this column, and we can resolve those. Whoops, that needs to be an 8, and the reason that needs to be an 8, by the way, is just because I kind of looked ahead a tiny bit and saw that I wouldn't be able to put an 8 down here. That's all that was. That wasn't magic. The 7 gives me that 7, 9 pair. Now I need 1, 2, 3, and 5. The 2 can't go in these positions, so it goes here. 3 can't go in these positions, so it goes here. So now I need to place 1 and 5, and the 5 tells me which way around they go. Last digit here is 3. Finally, I've placed my 6. I need to place the last two digits in these rows. There's a 7. These are going to have to be a 4 and a 9 in that order. And that is how you solve negative 40 degrees by Philip Newman. Hope you enjoyed, and have a great rest of your day.